All right, so now I'm going to show you how to name ionic compounds. And to name ionic compounds, you name your cation first, which is usually the metal, and then you name your anion second, which is usually a nonmetal. It could also be a polyatomic ion. So for binary ionic compounds, those are the ones in which we have only two different elements, so a metal and a nonmetal. In a binary ionic compound, the anion, or the nonmetal, ends with the suffix IDE. So bromide, chloride, oxide, etc. Another tip when working when trying to name ionic compounds is that anytime you have a metal that forms more than one type of cation, a Roman numeral in parentheses is used to show its charge. So Fe2 plus we call that the iron two ion. Fe3 plus we call that the iron three ion because ion because iron is a metal that can form more than one type of cation. So you may be asking yourselves, well, which metals can form more than one type of cation versus, you know, which metals can only form one type of cation? And I'm about to answer that question for you right now. Group 1A metals, group 2A metals, aluminum, zinc, silver, and scandium all form only one type of cation. Group 1A metals have a plus 1 charge, group 2A metals have a plus 2 charge, aluminum has a plus 3 charge, zinc has a plus 2 charge, silver has a plus 1 charge, and scandium, scandium has a plus 3 charge. So if your metal is any metal other than these metals that are listed here, then you're going to need to use a Roman numeral to specify the charge of the cation from which that metal forms. So let's go through a couple of examples. NABR, what is this stuff? What's the name of this? Well, it looks like we have our sodium ion Na plus, and then our cation is the bromide ion, which is Br minus. So the name of this compound is sodium bromide. Notice we don't have to use a Roman numeral here because Sodium is a group 1A metal, so it only forms a plus 1 cation. So sodium, lithium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, all of those metals only form the plus 1 cation. And so a Roman numeral is unnecessary. Let's name another one. K2O, what is the name of that? Well, let's start with our cation again. Our cation is just the potassium ion. Or K plus. And our anion is the oxide ion. Which is O2 minus. And notice that we have two one plus charge potassium ions that cancel out the two minus charge of the oxide ion so that this compound is overall charge neutral. So we have the potassium ion and we have the oxide ion. So the name of this compound would then be potassium oxide. Just like when we did the sodium ion, the potassium ion doesn't need a Roman numeral because it's also a group 1A metal. So let's do another one. How about this one? CaF2. 
our anion, excuse me, our cation is the calcium ion, which is Ca2+, and our anion is the fluoride ion, or F-. In this case, we have two fluoride ions at minus one charge apiece that cancel out the one calcium ion that carries a charge of two plus, making this compound overall charge neutral, so it's definitely a valid formula. Calcium ion is our, is our cation, fluoride ion is our anion, so the name of this is calcium fluoride. Pretty easy. Let's, uh, let's go on to one that might be a little bit harder. Let's see. Al2 and then SO4 in parentheses subscript 3. What is the name of this? Our cation is the aluminum ion, which is Al3+. Now aluminum isn't a group 1A or a, or a group 2A metal, but it does form only one type of cation. As you can see, if I bring back my list here, Aluminum does fall into the list of metals that form only one type of cation, so we don't we don't need to ro uh, worry about a Roman numeral in this case either. Our anion, this is a polyatomic ion called the sulfate ion. And the formula for the sulfate ion is SO4 2 minus. And there's really no trick to figuring that out. This is just one of those things that you gotta memorize. So the sulfate ion has the formula SO4 with a two minus charge. And notice that there are three sulfate ions at negative two charge apiece that neutralize the two aluminum ions which are at three plus apiece. So this thing is definitely electrically uh, neutral overall. If it wasn't, then we would have some kind of charge over here, and we don't, so this is a valid formula. So aluminum ion is our cation, sulfate ion is our anion. So the compound, aluminum sulfate. Now let's move on to one that might be a little bit tricky. FEPO4. What is the name of this stuff? Well, as you might recall, iron is actually one of those metals that can form more than one type of cation. So when your metal forms more than one type of cation, it's a good idea to start with your anion first and then see if you can figure out the charge of your cation from whatever the charge of your anion is. And so let's start with our anion. Our anion is this guy right here. This is called the phosphate ion. And the formula for the phosphate ion is PO4 3 minus. Again, this is just one of those common polyatomic ions that is worth memorizing. So Given that our phosphate ion has a charge of 3 minus and that we have only one iron atom or one iron ion, geez, that's hard to say three times fast. Anyway, we can conclude that the charge of this thing, this is just going to be Fe3 plus because we need a charge of 3 plus to neutralize this 3 minus charge. 
so that our compound overall is charge neutral. So the Fe3 plus ion, that is called the iron 3 ion, So this is a case where we do have to use the Roman numeral because iron forms many different cations. So putting it all together, the name of this compound is iron 3 phosphate. So there you go. That is how to name ionic compounds.